And you know what? It's happening more and more uh, out there. And, uh, you know, like, you know, sometimes you, you know, you share a kitchen and dining room with, you know, uh, separate bedrooms, you know, soundproof interior walls, more so dual laundry, uh, separate entrances, split bedrooms. You know, they, they are doing a lot of that's happening right now. Like you got the grandparents, the parents and the kids living in this all in the same house, which could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. You know what I mean? It just depends on, uh, on the daughter-in-law, father-in-law law son-in-law mother-in-law who know you know what i mean like when you overprice you're gonna you're gonna hurt yourself but but if you dropped it to the 700 mark let's say 699.9 you you just put yourself in the category of eight eight point seven percent almost nine percent chance of selling so like like if you're looking for a two-story home four bedrooms uh whether it's st Catharines, niagara falls or welland there's probably 10 of them in the area for sale so listen to this episode. Hello, everyone. This is Rob Golfy with Remax the Golfy team. Welcome to the Golfy Real Estate Show Niagara Edition with host Stephanie Vivier. Hey there, Rob. How's it going? Good, good, good. It's beautiful weather. And I know we had some major rainfalls uh, this week, but uh, but otherwise it is nice and uh, and. Uh, it's fantastic out there, and it's summer, and uh, this is what we uh, kind of wait for uh, all through the winter months and spring and all that kind of stuff. So we're lo loving it, loving it, and uh, just doing you know different things uh, out there. So it's been uh, been fantastic. It's so true. Um, we had some really, really hot weather and we're getting a little bit of a break of that right now. So it's like a little bit of something for everyone. But yeah, I'm kind of savoring every single one of these days. Uh, when it comes to the heat, how is the real estate market? Are, are we still are we seeing some heat there? So the real estate market, I'll tell you, it, it is a little bit flat. And I mean, houses are selling, but I mean, a, a lot of them aren't selling. And it's because a lot of the people right now, they're, uh, you know, they're feeling they 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 want more than what the market's willing to pay right now and uh you know they're, they're and and they're staying on the market a little longer especially in niagara niagara's taking a taking a big uh big hit in uh when it comes to uh, uh home sales like they've got tons of listings and and they're sitting and uh right now you can't afford to mess around with the price i mean it, like if you got time and everything yeah you can leave the price high but down the road it, it'll it'll hurt you if you if if you let it go too long but uh but um we were just doing i was just doing the stats on what happens if you price your house even even if it's a thousand dollars above a certain uh amount so and i did this in niagara so in year to date right now in all of Niagara, 8,938 new listings were listed in Niagara. That's a lot. That, 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 okay, is, so that is incredible. And, uh, but, uh, it, it, and I'm looking at that and I'm going, wow. So, and I did a price point of the percentage of homes uh, that, that sold, right? So in between the four and $500,000 range, uh, there was 597, homes sold uh, again from January to, um, uh, uh, July 18th. I think I did this. And so that's 6.7% of the, of, of the, uh, of, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, inventory 6.7% of the, uh, inventory now between 500 and 600,000, it was 8.5% mm -hmm. of the inventory, uh, that sold. And now 600 to 700 was 8.7. Now, when you jump up from 700 to 800, right? So let's say you listed your house for 730,000. Your, your chances of selling was only 6% versus the 8.7%. Like that makes a huge difference. Like, like, yeah. like it, especially if you think about it, um, like, there wasn't that many homes that sold in, in that time. Like, I mean, in, between the seven hundred and eight hundred thousand dollar mark, there was only 534 homes that sold. And I'm talking about in the course of six and a half months or yeah, no, up to the end of, uh, yeah, actually to the end of, uh, um, uh, a middle, middle of, uh, a July, uh, six and a half months of homes that sold between seven and 800,000. So, and that's just 6% of the inventory. And so it does, it's not that much. So like when you overprice, you're going to, you're going to hurt yourself. But, but if you dropped it to the 700 mark, let's say 699.9, nine, 
you you just put yourself in the category of eight eight point seven percent, almost nine percent chance of selling. So it so looking at these numbers and and pricing is huge issue. Sometimes people like I even did from um, I did from one million to one point one million, one point three percent chance. Of, hmm. of inventory there was only there was only uh there was 117 that sold but it but there's a lot of inventory out there now now sometimes people want to list at a million twenty five thousand oh we just need we want to net a million you're better off i'm telling you you're better off saying no to an offer than not get any offers at all so you have to be careful just price it right so so there's a plateau right now and um if you go over a million dollars, that changes the dynamics. If you list a house over a million dollars, and if it's not worth over a million dollars, again, you hurt yourself. But at a million dollars, um, again, the the uh, um, down payment is greater. Um, but once you go under that million, it's a lot less. It's there, it's a huge difference. So you could tell as each price point how the percentage is, and we know now, like you know, between five hundred. And seven hundred thousand is the key uh, price point that is seems to be selling a lot in Niagara. Um, there's a lot between four and five hundred thousand. That's six point seven percent. But yeah, it's it's incredible uh, on uh, how that is. And it, it's funny though, like it, the numbers seem low when you say percentage wise, like six percent, nine percent, or whatever. But it is a strong difference uh, overall. Like like again. 8,938 new listings. But all of that, if you calculate, you know, that's, uh, but maybe 2,000 listings sold. So, oh, wow. but yeah, like, so like in that time period, so, yeah. so, the, so what happens to the other ones are just, they sit, they, they end up going off the market. They end up going off the market, canceled. Uh, they end up getting price reductions, eventually selling and all that kind of stuff. So you're competing against a lot of homes that are for sale out there. So, and, and, and here's the problem. So we, I went on an evaluation, uh, just this week and, uh, we were there and, the, these people paid 1.3 million for this house in 2007. Okay, and on the water, beautiful backyard. They, you know, they put some money into it. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And uh, so, so I do, I do. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, three formulas. Now, MPAC estimated uh, today's value at, was at 3.1 million, right? I estimated somewhere at between three and a half to 3.7 million. And uh, that's what my number was. So, so you can't always go by impact, okay? And I don't because I go, and but and then um, then I do the other formula. Is that okay? What was the what was the uh, 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 average sale price in two thousand seven in that area, and what's the average sale price today? Well, it showed that it went up about one hundred ninety percent in that from two thousand seven till now. So that worked out to about. 3.7 million, 3.8. So, and so I'm going, you know what? I think my number is accurate. So they had a couple other people and they kind of were thinking 5 million. And, oh, wow. Yeah. And those other people somehow must have said, they said 5 million. And the reason why they're saying 5 million, they, they're basically uh, comparing their house based on homes that are on the market right now that haven't sold. Now, they're in this area, basically, in this like wide range of area, there hasn't been a house that sold over $2 million in, I think it's about three, four years since 2020. So, and these people are thinking $5 million. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm walking in, I said, you know, guys, I, I know I'm going to be, the, and she goes, I, I, I said to her, first thing, what's the most important thing that you're looking for in a realtor? She says, honesty. I said, well, that's the one thing you're going to get from me, but you're not going to like it. I go, so <laughs> you're going to get that from me. So she said, um, so I gave her that evaluation. She says, well, somebody else said 5 million. I says, I know. They're, because they said 5 million because they're looking at the other houses that haven't sold and they're close to 5 million and they're not going to sell and you're chasing a lost leader. And, uh, and I said, if you wanted me to list this house at $5 million, I probably would not take it. And I wow. says, yeah, I said, the most I would probably take, I said, is, um, I said, I'd probably go in the high 300, uh, three millions. I said, I'd, yeah. I'd be willing to work with you at that. But I said, there's no sense me taking a listing at $5 million 
me knowing that you're not going to sell it for that much and and you're going to be frustrated uh, through the whole course of the time that I have the listing and you're going to say, why can't you sell it? And I says, you know, and give it, to, I said, give it to the other guys that said 5 million. I said, you're going to see them pushing you to do a price drop right away. I said, they're giving you that high evaluation just because they want the listing. And I, I, I don't work that way. I said, I'm willing to work with you, but I'm not, but there's too much of a difference there. And I, and uh, anyway, I, I think she really liked us, but, but because we were pushing away, we were like saying, you know what, go with the other people. And, uh, and it, why would I say go with another agent when I want the business, right? Yeah. You know, like, and, right. and, and I'll tell you this market that we're in right now, I I'm, I'm pretty accurate on my numbers because it's a balanced and flat market. And, but when the market's go, shooting up fast or shooting down fast, it's hard to gauge. You can't like, you can give a number and you can get three different agents, give them three different numbers. And, uh, and let's say like in 2021, they gave a number, the high number, they were going to get it. Like it, it's mm -hmm. hard to tell. Cause we didn't know. So I, you know, but now I, I know the numbers I, I have, you know, the three formulas I put together and, and if it comes close, which it did. And I knew my numbers were right. It, I said, $5 million. I says, you know what? And, and I, I go, were they confident? I, and uh, they go, yeah. I go, well, yeah, they're salespeople. Of course they're confident. I go, <laughs> I go, of course. But you know what? She couldn't believe that we were uh, uh, staying uh, tight with our number. And I, and I, I, I you know what, Stephanie, I, I'll tell you, I don't want the, the, to take that on. I'm uh, especially that much of a difference in price. I don't want to take that on because it, it's giving them false hope. You know, right. if you're willing to take the job, that means they're looking at you saying, well, he's willing to take it on. Um, then it must be, there must be some hope of getting that number. Right. But, yeah. uh, but there's also something there about, you know, you said you were going to be honest, you came in, you done your formulas. These are your numbers. If you had said, okay, fine, I'll do the 5 million. That's not really staying true to what you thought it would be. No, no way. And, uh, you know what, like the inventory level is so high out there right now. Why do I need another house that is not going to sell? There was a, there was one, another one in Niagara Falls. I mean, I, I gave them a, a, an evaluation. They, uh, they couldn't wait to kick me out of the house. Guess what? <laughs> I, I, I did that in November of last year, October, November, it's still for sale. It's still okay. for sale. Like we're talking, how many months is that? Is that six months? That's probably eight months, nine months. Well, more than, yeah, eight yeah. months. Eight months yeah. They're going to they're, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna, uh, come up uh, for a year soon. And um, yeah. so, I, like, you know what it is? I'll tell you. Um, it, like an experienced agent uh, and, and your top agents are, are, your, are your way to go. And, and I'm not just, you know, promoting, you know, you know myself. and yeah, Kind of yes a little, a little bit. But anyway, but but. The more experienced the agent, the more honest he's going to be. Because if he's doing a lot of business, he he doesn't need he doesn't need your listing to make a difference in his lifestyle or in his paycheck or anything. He is going to give you the true number. Now, if you get an agent that gives you a high number, but he only sells one or two homes a year, he, you he needs that listing. And and, and I'll tell you, expensive listings. Like the higher end homes, you need you need to have money to sell those. They're they're not they're not cheap to sell. So and that's and that's another reason why I don't want a f that five million dollar listing that's only worth three three point five to three point eight million somewhere in there. I don't I don't need that because I'm going to spend five ten thousand dollars in marketing that house that one house alone, and that can end up you know that that costs me money. I I, I need to get a return on my investment, and. Um, so I just, you know, and we get a lot of those, like there's a lot of listings that we turn around, but we get them the second time around. Like mm -hmm. after they had, they went with the agent that gave, made them the promise that they can get that number. When it doesn't sell, they call us back and said, listen, you were right. Let's, let's go with your number. And then now, like I had, I had one that we, uh, um, that we did two years later, they called me. <gasps> Wow. two years and they had it listed for two years and then finally they said you know what rob i you know i i realize it so but if i took it at his price i would have been another one of those agents that couldn't do it and and took it and uh and would have failed of course i would have failed because it, it was a ridiculous uh number that they wanted but two years later i ended up getting the listing we ended up selling it it was a high-end listing and we ended up selling it within i think it took it did still take 60 days to sell but we sold it 
So Well, it makes it a little harder on the second time around, right? Because it's been for sale. And even though that number is right, uh, people know what's in the market. That's right. Because all everybody that wanted to look for that, and, and that was a waterfront property. Everybody that was looking for a waterfront pro property knew about that house. So, so we lost all those buyers. We lost them. So we had to wait for new buyers to come into the marketplace. And, and that's why it took 60 days. But otherwise, if we were fresh, new, never been listed before on the market, we were probably would have had it sold within two to three weeks. And, 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 and that's the key thing. Like right now, um, there's strategies and how to uh, list and, and time and day and everything like that. Like you gotta be very careful. There's, there's, there is an art to this and a strategy and marketing which a lot of people don't have. And we compare ourselves and, and nobody can match our, our systems. I'm gonna tell you that. I, I dare for anybody to challenge me on that. Welcome back to the Golfie Real Estate Show, Niagara Edition. I'm your host, Steph Vivier. Rob Golfie is with us today, showing us that the numbers really do make a difference uh, in our first half there. Rob, I'm going to be a little bit selfish uh, and ask you some personal questions here. Sure, because go for my it. My friends know that I have this opportunity to chat with you every single week. And uh, recently, um, she went through a situation where her mother has passed away and her, her father is uh, predeceased. So now they have mom's house to sell. And I know you deal with this a lot so um you know they've got the siblings and it's the decision about when to sell uh what to do with a house um so the questions they have are uh when it's an estate like this would would that be in the listing do you have to disclose that their concern is that if people know that it's this situation that they might lowball or uh they might not get as good of a price no because the agent's Fiduciary duty is that they have to get the highest price for the uh, the seller. So it doesn't matter if it's a divorce or an estate sale. It does, but the only people that see that it's in a, an estate sale is the realtor, not the public. It'll say the estate, uh, the the estate of whoever the owner's name is on there. And but it it is not gonna if. It, it's not going to make a change in the, in what the outcome of the price is going to be. I know people feel that way. People feel there's a divorce in some cases. Yeah. Some divorces, there's battles, there's fights going on. And, and sometimes one spouse, you know, wants more, the other one doesn't care and they just want to get anything they want. And then all of a sudden uh, it goes long on and on and on. And everybody just doesn't give up. And, and, and somebody just happens to be at the right time to buy that house with the right mentality of, of the battle between the, the spouses. But 99% uh, of the time no and even if it's a uh power of a sale or you know a foreclosure they the banks they're tough they're even they're tougher to deal with because they get three appraisals done and um and they and they have to make sure that they get top dollar for it so when a realtor lists that house it they have to list it uh, you know at market value or they try a little higher than market value to see if the if the if the market's willing to pay more than what what the value is and if not they just reduce it but there is no no uh, way that um, that uh, even having that uh, as the estate of on there uh, will reduce the price of that house. Not not at all. Awesome. Okay. And the other question they have, because there's a little bit of a debate amongst the kids, uh, you know, grown kids, obviously, in this case, um, to paint or not to paint. Yeah, you know what? I'll tell you. If you can paint, like we're talking about paint before the house is listed. You mean? Yes. Yeah. I I, I think if you paint it. Um, I think it's fantastic. So I was just in a house and, um, it was a big house and it had like a, like a very light blue. Right. And it, it's probably more like a, I don't know, like it's 10, like it's, I would have painted it a different color now to paint, a, you know, a 4,000 square foot home is a lot of money, but sometimes that makes the difference. And, okay. but, but I'll tell you, if you have a two story or a bungalow and let's say you got, you know, kind of you know, reds and blues, like just, you know what I mean? I try to paint it like a neutral color. It'll make a huge difference. I'm not saying you're going to get more money, but it's going to sell faster and, and it'll be a more like a solid price. You'll, you'll get, you'll get the number that the market value is. Now, if, if you have all these different color paints and it's, you know, like, like blue and all these, you know, like colors that people have to know that they have to paint when they get in there, it, it doesn't show as well as, as a nice neutral color. Neutral colors are, are the way to go. If you can afford to paint, do it. That makes the difference on people, you know, coming in, looking at your house and they say, hey, wow, I can live here. And it's, you know, because it, it brings it more brighter and everything else like that. 
Okay. All right. So I will bring those uh, answers back to uh, my friend. Appreciate that, Rob. Uh, This week, we were talking about the weather a little bit in the first half, and we got a ton of rain. Uh, We didn't get it as bad as Toronto, but I actually heard a disastrous story about uh, someone in Burlington whose house is completely ruined and they didn't have flood insurance. Oh, you know what? I'll tell you, this is where the problems happen. A lot of people don't know this, but if if you have water backup in your house, I think you're covered. But if you have overland water coming into your house, you are done. There is nothing. You are not going to be covered for that overland water. And people don't know that on their policies. And you better, you got to check it out. Like our weather systems right now are uh, like, it's extreme in certain cases. Like, you know, we may get like a, a, a like a huge blizzard in the course of a 24 hours and then it's gone and, and or whatever, or like, but look at the rain we've been getting. It, we're, we're, we're getting these torrential rains that is causing, you know, a lot of problems out there. Our, our uh, sewer systems cannot handle the amount of water that's going up. A lot of people had backup from their uh, in their basement because they didn't have a backflow, like you know where it locks in. Uh, if uh, if water's coming up, it, it stops it from coming up, and um, it uh, like yep, yeah, you got to be careful. Better check your policy. I'm telling you, call your insurance guy and say, listen, do I have overflow uh, flooding insurance? Because if you don't. And and you get a basement flood and you got a finished basement. That's 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 thirty to fifty thousand dollar job, depending how big your house is and in and how much how elaborate it, your basement's done. So you got to be very very careful. Like it's it's it, it it it's crazy. Now the other thing is, is nobody even really knows and checks to see if they're in an area where there's a lot of flooding that happens. Like, you know, well, that's what I'm questioning now. Cause I've seen the, you know, we saw what happened, like even Drake and the Bridalwood path, you know, you think those uh, very expensive houses, they wouldn't have that happening. So, so how do we know? Yeah. You, you know what? Sometimes it's good to talk to neighbors. I'll tell you, just go there just say, Hey, listen, how's the crime? How's the, you know, is there any flooding? Is there any issues? Is there any issues? You know, even, even like sometimes some areas they have like, an infestation of rats and i mean rats are big they're like little big animals like they're just like like i I, i'm i would be scared to see a rat running around my house or even around my house and uh i you 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 have to talk to the neighbors and sometimes neighbors will tell you yeah yeah 30 years ago somebody was murdered in that house right and he's like what (laughs) it's like you know like what i didn't know that like but i'm telling you it's good to talk to the neighbors like just knock on their door say hey listen we're looking at buying this house and is there any anything that you heard of maybe in the past 20 years like but try to find out somebody that's lived there for a good 20 30 years because they they will know the history and believe me those people appreciate uh you coming there especially you know if it's a young couple and you have your little baby with you in your arms and you you know young i mean people want to help these young couples out right they'll say yeah don't buy that house you're gonna have problems for the rest of your life you know what i mean like but they do neighbors they divulge information even you know it's crazy how much information they divulge good way to find out and ask them questions how's you know is there any you know uh you know rodent infestation is there flooding is there anything that i should be aware of that i don't know like you know what i mean like because like people homeowners don't disclose that much i mean they'll they'll disclose what the house is but if there was a flood 10 years ago like a major flood what like could that happen again like and yeah and you can get torrential rains once every 10 years but who wants to go through that right you know? Yeah. You so, only want to go through it once. Um, so how does that affect uh, the property value? Let's say you did have a flood in your home uh, and you were going to be selling. Do you have to disclose that? You know what? If you had several floods, yeah, absolutely. Um, you got to disclose it, but you got to be like, like, but let's say you have a, a leaky basement and you rectified it. Uh, and it, it just happened within the last couple of years. You got to disclose that. But if you had a leaky basement and then you sell 10 years later, you almost forget about it. And you haven't had a leaky basement since then. You, you don't have to worry about that. Um, but you do have to disclose any any problems because I'll tell you, if you don't disclose, you're going to get sued. They're going to come after you and they're going to say, listen, you hid this uh, problem. You didn't disclose it. And if we knew about this problem, we probably would have either rectified it before it happened again, or, um, or, you know what I mean? Like, or we would have gone in at a different price. So, so always disclose. It's not, it's not worth it. I'm telling you, like the truth always comes out and you know, if you think you can get away with it, it's not going to happen. You know, it's not. So it's always good 
to uh, to just disclose what you have. If like if if the if the area floods once every ten years, well, guess what? I might you know like think, okay, do I really want to deal with that? Like you know, like you know, like look like look at the torrential rain we just got now. People like like my son, he uh, he bought a house last year, and there and he lives in Burlington. He lives, his house is, sits up a little higher than the rest of the houses, but his backyard, he has a pool back there and, and the ground is a little lower. So his backyard was flooded. And mm. so he's in Burlington, but he was fine. The house was fine. Nothing happened to the house, but he's like, holy smokes. He had to get a, find a pump and everything and, uh, to pump water out of the pool. And, and like, it, and, and it took him about two, three days to, to, to pump the water out of his backyard. And so now he knows that he's probably going to put some infill in the backyard in some parts around the pool there just so that water doesn't fill up there as much. So, um, but yeah, like he, he learned it and he's going to fix it. And then if, and then he'll keep an eye on it. But now he's a new owner of this house. So the previous owner, I mean, again, when was the last torrential rain? It cut 10 years ago. And, and who knows if, if that, the previous owner even owned it for 10 years. So it's, it, it, it's, it's hard, but that's when you talk to the neighbors, right? That's when you go to the neighbors and say, Hey, is there anything going on? But it, um, you live and learn, right? You live and learn, and you got to just get smarter as you get go along. But that's why you talk to an exper- experienced realtor and ask questions, and, uh, and then we can we can probably answer a lot of the questions for you. Yeah, some great tips there uh, to get a hold of our insurance people. We'll be doing that on Monday morning for sure. Yeah. Um, Rob, we talked a lot about, you know, affordability on this show in terms of, you know, how people are actually making it happen. Um, and it looks like multi-generational living is happening more. Uh, people are sharing costs and they're even sharing mortgages. Absolutely. There is a lot of multi-generational homes are being built right now. I know, I know Empire Homes are doing it and Pinewood Homes. Uh, I, there's probably a lot of other different uh, builders that are uh, building these multi-generational homes, especially, and I saw a bunch in the south end of Niagara Falls near that, not too far around the uh, uh, Costco that's in Niagara Falls. And you know what? It, 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 it's happening more and more uh, out there. And uh, like it, it, it's, you know, like, you know, sometimes you, you know, you share a kitchen and dining room with, you know, uh, separate bedrooms, you know, soundproof ex- interior walls, more so dual laundry, uh, separate entrances, split bedrooms, you know, they, they are doing they, a lot of that's happening right now. Like you got the grandparents, the parents and the kids living in this all in the same house, which is, could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. You know what I mean? It just depends on, uh, on the daughter-in-law, father-in-law, son-in-law, mother-in-law, who know, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you, if you have your mother-in-law living with you and she's going to say, well, I, I don't like the way you're, you know, cooking for my son. I don't like the way you're, I don't like the way you're doing his laundry. He likes uh, fabric softener in his uh, towels and you're not putting it in. So, <laughs> you know, but uh, you know what I mean? Like it's, uh, it could be, it could be, it could be testy. You know what I mean? Like, cause uh, when you get people uh, living, uh, living together and, uh, you got a lot of people living in a house together, you know, you, you, you got to make sure you got parking, like, you know, the driveway has got to be big enough. And, uh, but so they're building these houses and, uh, and, and they're selling. So there's obviously a, a demand for them. And, uh, but yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of pluses and minuses with multi-generational homes. That's for sure. You got to really know, um, I, I guess, agreements or, you know, what comes into play, like really figuring everything out. If you do have those separate entrances, even like coming to the agreement of, okay, well, then you don't use my entrance or, you know, we're only having dinner these certain nights. Like it, that kind of sounds silly, but you do have to set those boundaries up. Oh, for fun. sure. For sure. And, and there could be battles. It could separate families. You know what I mean? You got to be very careful. Um, you got to set the rules. Um, I know most daughter-in-laws may not want to live with their uh in-laws but da- but daughters will live with their parents and and most guys most men can handle that like you know what i mean like mm-hmm. like you know but it's it's the you know it just depends how close um you know the in-law is with you know the 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 kids right like it's it it, it, could, it could it could destroy a family it can destroy it but oh can make a family closer and you know what and then but you got a full-time babysitter if you got kids you got the grandparents there um and you're you're all set you can take off and you know go on a, a vacation and, and do all that but 
but you gotta, you really gotta know your family pretty good. And, and, and a lot of it's happening. They're sharing the mortgage, they're sharing the house and they're sharing a lot of things, but it's the only way to afford a house now. And you gotta be uh, very careful. All right. Well, there's some options there for you. If you are thinking of that, the Golfy team can help you out. Find them online, robgolfy.com. That's Rob, G-O-L-F-I.com. Rob is sticking around here. We'll be back with more Golfy Real Estate Show Niagara Edition next here on News Talk 610 CKTV. Welcome back to the Golfy Real Estate Show Niagara Edition. I'm your host, Steph Vivier. Rob Golfy is here getting into all things housing and even more. Sometimes we talk about traffic. Traffic is so bad in Toronto, Rob. I, I just read there's, um, it used to be the Honda Indy. Uh, there's a new name for it. I think it's the Indy brought to you by Honda Dealers of Ontario or something. It's going on this weekend in Toronto. Uh, but one of the race car drivers had to go to the press conference on Thursday and he actually rented one of those city bikes to get there because the traffic was so bad. So the race car driver biked over to the press conference. I, I believe it. it. It's crazy, this traffic right now that's happening out there, especially... Like, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you, uh, Stephanie. Now, the traffic going to Niagara on Saturdays is a given, and Sundays. It's, like, jammed, right from Burlington all the way to Niagara Falls. It's crazy. But now it's starting to be like that a little bit during the weekdays, and I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's vacation travel or it's just now it's just we're at a different level of, 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 of the Queenie, how it is. But going, like, you have to, you have to if you want to go someplace at noon, you got to leave at 8 o'clock in the morning and get there and hang out someplace so you don't have to sit in traffic for three hours. And uh, it, it's becoming that. And, and that's what's happening with even people. Uh, people are getting sick and tired of the traffic, especially in, in, the, in Toronto, even Hamilton, and now they're going towards Niagara and uh, and or or elsewhere like Barrie, Ontario, or even uh, Guelph or Kitchener, Waterloo. People want to get away for it, and and the problem here is happening is people are saying, "Hey, I I am done with this traffic," and and Toronto is losing some good talent of people working there, and people are looking to find work locally, either in Niagara, even Hamilton, parts of Hamilton, but Niagara seems to be where things are happening. And companies are even moving out that way because they know they're losing talent because of the traffic. But now, because companies are asking, hey, because of COVID, everybody was working at home and people are still there. But now companies are saying, hey, we want you to come back. And in, uh, people, employees are saying, well, you know, I kind of got used to working at home. I really don't want to drive to work every day and, and deal with the battle of the traffic. I'm, I'm going to stay here. Otherwise, I'm going to look for another job. And people are looking for jobs Either they can work remotely. If not, they're, they're going to look for jobs where there is no traffic. People are sick of that traffic. And um, and I know in the 90s, they uh, they, they opened the, lane, the the Queen Elizabeth Way to three lanes, but they should have done four lanes at that time. Like, like they know the, the t- trajectory of, of what's happening with the population and everything is moving on. Why didn't they just do four lanes? I know the cost, the cost was expensive, but... They're already starting to build a new Garden City Skyway Bridge. They're they're build they're they're building a twin, from my understanding. I'm not sure when they're yeah. starting on that, and uh, but apparently they're going to be doing that, and they'll probably charge tolls on that to pay that. Who knows? But um, but I'll tell you, um, it, it, people are moving away from uh, the GTA just uh, just be, you know because of the traffic, and and th- that means they'll be looking for jobs locally, and you know people are getting uh, tired of this. Uh, lifestyle. The millennials, they know how to live life better than the, the baby boomers. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Rob, on that, this is a great segue for my next question because, you know, you were talking about Niagara's a pretty balanced market right now and, and how, you know, to start the show, you, you really exemplified how just even listing your house twenty or $30,000 less is the difference between selling or not. So then, you know, the question comes because we also have maybe another interest rate coming down. Should people be listing? You know, you're, you're telling us people want to get away from traffic. Maybe they're going to start to look at Niagara. Should we wait until uh, we get some of those more uh, interest rate drops, maybe till the fall, or should we be looking to sell now? I, You know what? If you sell now, it's because you're selling because either, you know, relocation, divorce, or downsizing, or upsizing because your family's growing, or, you know, whatever. Now, those people are selling. Now, it, it they're going to get market value the way it is now. The market, houses are selling long, you price it right. They're, they're selling. And, and, and the market is flat, but if it's priced right, there's buyers out there. Now, 
right now for buyers, if I was if I was a buyer, I'd be buying right now. It's a buyer's market. I'm telling you, it's a buyer's market, and it and it's going to be a buyer's market for a while now. The interest rate, if they drop another another quarter point, will it will it affect the the the, the market? I don't know because it because they did a quarter point was it about a month and a half ago or a month ago in uh, June. Yeah, in June, it didn't move the needle. It nothing changed. It, the market was still the same. So they may change a quarter point again. So now that's a half a point total that they dro- they're they dropping. And if it moves it a little bit, but not a m- as much, they'll keep it that way. And they'll probably keep going a little bit at a time. Now, they, 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 they rose the interest rates so fast. Now they're crawling down. And uh, so... I, I don't know if, if another quarter point will change the needle. I think once they get to a third uh, 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 interest rate drop, that's when it's gonna you're gonna start seeing the me- the needle move and people are starting to come come into the market. But right now, I'm telling you, you can get some good deals out there. There are some people that need to sell, right? And and the market is just not showing the price that they're asking. And next year, you're probably you're you're, you're probably going to gain twenty to fifty thousand dollars more equity on your house just by buying right now. And um, it's just, uh, yeah, the, the market is, uh, is, uh, is is a little flat, especially in Niagara. I think in Niagara c- compared to like Hamilton or, or, or Brantford or, uh, or Kitchener, Cambridge, Waterloo or Barrie, Ontario, like it, all the surrounding areas. Uh, Niagara, for some reason, uh, days on market is the longest uh, of all those areas. So I don't, I'm not sure why uh, it is because we're close to the GTA. And, and I would assume that, you know, like GTA buyers are still coming this way, but they're being more selective in their buying, I think. Well, that's really interesting. So, I mean, like you said, Rob, there's always going to be reasons why people have to list their homes. So if you are in the market to buy, this is uh, probably a good time to do it. Uh, And balance doesn't mean nothing's happened. It just means that it's balanced. That's right. That it just means that it's it's flowing along and it's just moving along and uh, and that's it. It's not, uh, uh, but but it is geared a little more towards the buyers right now because if a seller's like like if you're looking for a two story home, four bedrooms, uh, whether it's St. Catharines, Niagara Falls, or Welland, there's probably ten of them in the area for sale. So. If you're priced right and you got a beautiful house and you got a lot of upgrades in it, chances are yours is going to be the one that they're going to buy before the other ones. Um, so it's so you it just so you just got to com- compete against that. Now everybody's just holding strong and they're sitting there. Now a lot of those other seven of them are probably overpriced, so that's why they're sitting. And the three that are are priced right, they're going to sell. There are people are going to say this is the one. It's priced right. Let's go for it. And you know they got the backyard all nicely done and the basement's finished and all that kind of stuff. So that's the difference between. Um, um, people's homes when people are looking at it. There, there, there are a lot of comparables out there, a lot of com- competition for sellers to when they're selling. So if they price it right, they'll sell. One of the things you might encounter when you uh, buy a new home is that it might be all set up as a smart home. Uh, Rob, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, pros and cons of the smart home. They can do all kinds of things now, right, with, with apps and, and uh, having everything integrated. Oh, no kidding. So uh, and it, it, slowly everybody's getting uh, their house to the smart home. Like they, they have these little plugs you can plug in your outlets and then you connect it to whatever your lights or connect it to anything. You know, we have Google and uh, Alexa uh, and uh, but they're, they're pretty cool. You can unlock lock doors from remotely uh, open your garage. Now, you know, you can do if you got um like the Teslas, you can start it for somebody and say, hey, I don't uh, take my car and, and drive it over there and you don't need to, to have a key. They, you can do it all remotely. Smart homes are cool, but when power is out, you're in trouble. And uh, so, but uh, yeah, otherwise, right. uh, you can't do yeah, anything. Yeah, no kidding. I know. You know, the, some of the disadvantages, security, there are security risks uh, for potential hacking. High, you know, and the cost to ins- install, like, you know, like a smart home is very expensive. And, uh, and it, it, you know what? I'm going to tell you, like, I'm very simple. Like, like it, I, I don't have time to learn all these programs and all this stuff and try to figure it out. Like, I, I've got cameras at all my offices and stuff like that. And I always have to, you know, talk to my security guy and say, hey, like, this is not working. Like, I'll try to figure it out on my own first before I have to call him. But but when there's too much technology involved, and but millennials, I mean, they can do it. They, they, they're quick. 
they, they're quick on it because they understand how that system works. But, but when you get a little older, it's, it's a little tougher for the older guys because, I mean, we had to transition into uh, technology pro- probably later in life versus, uh, at, you know, versus high school. And, and it's easier then. But smart homes are nice. It is, you know, you can open curtains, close curtains, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there, there's so many things you can say, play music. I don't no, I don't, I, I prefer a different song. You know, it's like, you know, you just have to talk everywhere around the house and you got everything happening for you. So, but smart homes are awesome to have. Um, I do have some gadgets in, in uh, some of the properties and also my personal residence uh, of smart home. But the one thing is you got to be careful because if you have one of those Googles uh, or Alexas, um, they're listening in all the time. They're always listening in. And uh, I mean, it doesn't mean somebody's listening in. It just means the technology's listening in. And let's say you're talking about you're looking at buying a boat. All of a sudden, what shows up on your Google? boats, all these boat things and, you know, boat parts, boats and everything like that. So it's, it's, you know, it's just basically, you know, and a company paid, uh, Google to, to say, if anybody's talking about boats, we want to make sure our ads go up for boats to that person when that happens. Now, Google doesn't, you know, look, Oh, look at this guy's talking about boats. This guy's talking about, they don't know. It's all, it's all technology. It's all technology. Nobody knows what anybody's talking about except the computers and they're all talking to each other, but it is a great thing, but it's also a negative thing. I mean, it just depends on how you feel about it, but I, I, I'm okay with it. I'm good with it. It, uh, but when the power goes out, you better have a generator. <laughs> well, not only that, the big IT global outage that we've had this week, uh, you know, flights being canceled and uh, banks being down, businesses across the world not able to work because of uh, some software that was actually supposed to con- like uh, protect those businesses from being hacked into. So, you know, those kinds of things can happen. Uh, we were talking about on, uh, on our, our show in Niagara in the morning about like what's more frustrating uh traffic or technology oh boy what do you think that's a good question traffic or technology um i i think traffic i i don't know i i I do because i i can handle working with technology to a certain degree uh it is frustrating but i i remember um this was it past week or last week um i and I, i always you know figure out time-wise how long it's going to take me to get to uh, certain areas. And I had to get, uh, I was in Hamilton. I had to get to Niagara Falls. And it was a Friday afternoon. And I'm like, oh, boy. Like, I couldn't believe the traffic. I just, like, the traffic was insane all the way to Niagara Falls. At, like, it was like two thirty, three o'clock on Friday afternoon. That was last week. Yeah. Um, no, no, two weeks ago. And I, I couldn't believe it. And, uh, and I'm like, what is going on here? Like, it just, it was insane. Yeah. You know, like, and I don't know how people, I just don't get it. People go to the cottage every weekend and deal with that traffic. Cause it's just, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I, you know, like I would get a helicopter or something. I don't know. There's gotta be an easier way. I don't, I, it's not <laughs> like I can afford, it's not like I can afford to have a helicopter dr- <laughs> fly me there every weekend, but, but it's, it's just people tolerate it they tolerate that traffic and uh, i don't know um and that's why you know i ended up putting a pool in the backyard i says i I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna spend you know two to you know like four or five hours a weekend every week you know going to my cottage where you know it's tough i don't know like it's it's not my it's not my thing people have them and they can do it they can deal with it that's why more people are going towards niagara to buy cottages and pull cobran you know all along there They, they you know the traffic is not that bad. If I if I'm less than a, if I'm an hour away from a cottage, perfect. That I can handle that. If it's less than an hour, I can handle that. So the so the Muskokas are out. So it, it would have to be Niagara. It have to be on the, on uh, Lake Erie, anywhere along there. That would, I would get a cottage if I was going to get a cottage. Yeah. Well, see now you know how some of the traffic is getting worse around here, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, people <laughs> buying cottages out in Lake Erie. That's, that's why. Right. Yeah, that's right. Um, it is. A, yeah, it's a hard one though. Um, I I think I think traffic too. Like technology can really um, make me from completely calm and lovely to um, like angry minion in a second when it snaps. But traffic is like there's just something so uh, unhinging about 
not being able to move. Like, I don't mind if, you know, say say if a, a trip's going to take me an hour, but I see the traffic's me two hours. If there's an alternate way that I go and I'm moving the whole time and it's two hours, that doesn't bother me. It's the sitting there. Like, it's very, you feel trapped. Exactly. Same way, same way. And especially if you don't have enough juice in your tesla or gas in your car <laughs> and you're going oh my god there's no way to get off and you know like it's just like you're gonna you're gonna run out of gas right there on the highway oh, i ran out of gas last week rob i did oh no kidding oh boy i did i pushed it too far uh rob always a pleasure thank you so much for taking some time today thank you and have a great uh, weekend this is the Golfy Real Estate Show, Niagara Edition. You can find Rob and his team at robgolfie.com. Give him a call at 6, uh, 905-641-0308. 905-641-0308. Yeah, picking the wrong realtor, that'd be a big mistake. That cost me money. Hi, Rob here, and hey, we get it. We get that the right realtor makes all the difference. My advice, talk to three realtors, including one from the Golfie team. Compare and you'll see no one gets results like Golfie because of the millions we invest in marketing, getting you the most money in the least amount of time. The Golfie team, Golfie gets it sold. Pick the right realtor. Just Google Golfie.